Alright, in three, two, one. What is going on, everybody? This is your boy, Patty Swanka, back at it again with another podcast with my, with my friend here, Apollo. You can go find him over at Twitter, along with our very special guest, Word Burglar. Go check him out on Instagram and Twitter. Go check out his music. It is really good. I'm a personal fan of it. How are you guys doing today? Yeah. Oh, I think David Howard Thornton just tried to join the call. <laughs> Oh, I think I saw his name, but I think he left afterwards. There, <laughs> double surprise guest. But um, so yeah, um, Brandon, you, I don't think I tried to show you some of John's music. You listened to it. I've shown you a couple of his songs. Yeah. 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 I do want to. I do want to just. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, man. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I... I... Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm. I think we should... I think we can start out with our... Very first question involving your one of your latest songs, actually, uh, "Mental Patient." Um, while you were writing that, um, what sort of thought or some kind of inspiration did you use when writing that song, and like how like the video was made and all that? Like, what kind of inspiration came to that? And that's on my newest album called Rhyme Your Business. And Rental Patient, it's uh, throughout my music, it's sort of a bit of a, because I'm a nerd and I've been a lifelong nerd. And we're living in a golden time as nerds. And where there's so many great things, uh, movies, video games, comic books, stuff's coming out every week. It's, you can't even keep up with everything that's, that's happening. And I'm fascinated with, uh, I guess, sort of like pop culture history. So Rental Patient is really about that time back in the day before we could stream everything, before you could just download everything, when people had to go to video stores to rent movies and video games. Like you would have to leave your house, get this physical thing, and bring it back to your house. What? And if it sucked, you were stuck with it. I know. I, I, you know, it's like, yeah, I know. All right, Grandpa, this is crazy. But so so I'm, I'm interested in like that kind of like history. <clears throat> and how fascinating it is yeah. and because i do remember being a kid like going to the video store yeah. wanting to rent a video game and they didn't have it so i'd have yeah. to rent something else you take a risk or you, you and you don't know what you get so the yeah. song rental patient is really about that era where you needed rental patients mm. <laughs> and, uh, and i was definitely a rental patient and there's a lot of people out there you know whether you yeah. rented video games or movies whatever it is dvds blu-rays vhs tapes like going way back you know like laser discs oh, stuff man. like that and, um, you know people would rent like game boy games and stuff <laughs> that was oh, man. like it's crazy and, and, and other things so so that's that's really where the inspiration came from is, is sort of my passion for yeah this history uh that kind of gets forgotten about because people don't really talk about it that much now but we've all got our streaming services <laughs> where we watch our movies and everything now and you open Twitch. Netflix, and it looks like the wall of a video store, you know? So that's what the song's about, and I think it's kind of funny, and uh, I think uh, it, it's interesting to compare the two situations of, like, renting a movie or streaming a movie. Because, you know, I'm a nerd, so I get nerdy about this stuff. Oh, yeah, you'll fit right in. <laughs> it's, a, it's a deep dive. It's a deep dive. <laughs> yeah. I, the last I remember renting anything... I was, God, I can't remember. I was still living in the apartment, and I rented Hot Wheels the movie and oh Scooby-Doo Aloha. No. <laughs> what about you, uh, Brandon? What was the last thing you ever rented? Oh, that one's tough, to be honest. I feel like it's something from Blockbuster. Because mm. I know, like, every single time my mom got paid when I was, like, eight or nine, we always went to Blockbuster. Yeah, yeah. That's where most of my PlayStation 2 collection came from, because either my dad went, 
bought a bunch of random crap, <laughs> and then my mom went and bought a bunch of random crap. Um, like from the used bins or something? Like yeah, previous, that's... Yeah, previously played? That's... Blockbuster was my first experience ever with Star Wars, because I got Star Wars Revenge of the Sith th- uh, 3 or whatever oh, yeah. for PS2. But the last thing I ever rented probably was... <laughs> well, that's in the meantime, well, he's yeah, thinking. That's actually what? a tough question. What is the it last? Is. Thing Do you, you remember, ever... Sean? Or... I mean, if we're being uh, technical, I, a U-Haul. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if we're being technical. It was. A U-Haul, but... Wait, you just buy it on Amazon now. What are you doing? <laughs> oh man. But yeah, oh man, that, those are the good times. I honestly remember Blockbuster is one of my favorite stores to go to. They it sucks they closed. Yeah, I'd well, rather have Blockbuster than Netflix, honestly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the interaction out. with people. Exactly. Well, you you got to check out the video rental patient because that that is what it's about. Like leaving your house, you know. It's awesome. I, going out. If nothing else, you just get some fresh air. Yeah. <laughs> you know. It, it is nice, and the interaction with people, except when they tried to upsell you, like, the uh, you know, direct-to-video Lion King sequel or something. I'm like, what? I don't need this. <laughs> there's, actually, there's actually a live-action version of that movie coming out soon. Oh, yeah. Oh. I don't know oh, how I feel about it. <laughs> it looks so good. I don't know. Just the CGI on that is just, it, it's Ooh. top quality. Yeah, I heard Jungle Book was good. I didn't see that, but... Mm. I, heard it I didn't see that when I did yeah. They're making actually a uh, a darker version of the Jungle Book for Netflix called Mowgli, and it's basically like how we grew up, I guess, as an alternate way to tell the story. Interesting. Yeah. Because yeah, that's not like the book is originally like it's not Disney owned, right? Oh like, yeah, the it's Jungle not Disney. I actually thought thing, it yeah. used to be Disney owned, but then I learned it's not. Well, they yeah they adapted the original story, like a lot of that stuff, right? Are based on. Like, The Lion King is based on an old story, uh, like Little Mermaid. A lot of those things are based on other books, and then yeah. Disney made their adaptations of it. So <laughs> that's why, yeah, from time to time, you will see something like a, yeah. a different the Jungle Book. But. Yeah. And I think this will be a good time for Brandon to ask a question. I'm sure he's itching, too. He wants to get to know you better, too. I want to get to know you better, Brendan. Are you named right. Apollo after Battlestar oh. Galactica? No. <laughs> After the authority character, uh, you, know, you know that comic, no. the authority. I don't. I don't, I don't um, think he's ever heard of any of this. The God of Sun. <laughs> you named uh, that actually, God yes, of Sun. Yes. yes. <laughs> ding 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 ding. That is actually where a uh, partial part of my name came from. Hmm. But um, it does seem that a lot of cartoon character, cartoons, comics, and uh, toys became or become a huge part of your life as a kid or when you were younger what was your first introduction to this sort of genre of entertainment and do you feel it has affected your songs and work in any way hmm. well yeah when I was a kid I used to get Spider-Man comic books at the local gas station or uh, grocery store <laughs> I honestly did not know they sold them at gas stations I didn't know oh that. yeah man back in the day you'd get uh, they'd you corner stores gas stations like your local sobeys whatever that you could find comic books everywhere and mm. so i used to love spider-man comics read a lot of spider-man and that was sort of my gateway into the world of comic books which uh is definitely like i learned to read off comic books and it so i've sort of spent my life enjoying and and like tracking down old comic books and and stuff like that so yeah that definitely does inspire um yeah. my creativity i think like definitely at an early age also i was really into stuff like lego and transformers uh gi joes yeet. like any toys i could find like sorry yeet that's awesome <laughs> yeah like so i was into all that stuff and just like being creative and like making up these yeah. like stories and adventures just playing with toys and then of course i played video games and stuff too and i was always really big into rpgs so that was i, I yeah. enjoyed like sort of the quests and like the longer games that had like really good storylines and stuff to them you know like mm. different characters and dialogue and and all these mysteries you had to solve 
So that, I think, all that stuff definitely informs my art now uh, because I do write comics as well now, and I, and I make music. Yeah. So it's it's great to incorporate all that into into what I do, and uh, and I still do all that. I still read comics. I still play games, you know, whenever I have the time. And uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it, it's it's fun, to, and it's also kind of really fun to make like obscure references to some Spider-Man oh, yeah. villain or that nobody knows <laughs> unless you like really read the comics. Like and, big uh, wheel. And what, <laughs> yeah, that's a deep cut. I like that. Yeah, big wheel. Oh wow. Yeah, or like rocket racer. You oh know him? yes, I've heard the of him. The dude with the skateboard. Yeah, never <laughs> heard of him. Lucky. I, I even yeah. complained about the new Spider-Man game, asking where Big Wheel is. Why is he not in the new game? Damn it! You should never stop asking for stuff like that because there are crazy old marvel comics characters that haven't appeared in stuff for millions of years yes like, um i have a song called drawings with words which is all about rapping just about some of my favorite comic books and obscure comics and there's a video for that on youtube we shot it at fan expo in toronto so check that out if you're interested drawings with words uh, but i shout out like obscure comic characters like wood god like there's a marvel character called wood god <laughs> doesn't a, seem like an enjoyable comedy. It's, it's uh, you gotta check him out for yourself. But yeah, like Big Wheel, Wood God. There's a guy named Stuntmaster who drives a motorcycle up buildings. Like that's pretty badass. This fence eater man. <laughs> what, 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 that actually is pretty sick. What would you say your favorite like superhero would be? Like, oh is, my gosh! If you can name like one man off the bat. Uh, probably for the most comics I've ever read, it would be somebody like Spider-Man. Mm. I do, I, I love Peter Parker. I love that his, his alter ego, you know, when he's not Spidey, he's, he's just kind of a nerdy guy who's yeah. just trying to do the right thing and get by and he's, mm. he's kind of shy and he's got all of his own sort of problems in his real life, yeah. yet he can never, you know, fix those problems despite being a super-powered you know, character with the proportionate strength of a spider. Um, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, there's a lot of great Spider-Man series. Um, you know, I like Batman. Uh, I do like, um, like older Avengers comics with, uh, stories with like Hawkeye and stuff. And, um, I like yeah. Savage Dragon as well, which is an image comic that's been running for like a really long time. It's like, there's like 240 issues of that right now. Mm. And, um, it's it's a pretty weird out there obscure comic right now, but uh, Savage Dragon, I, I'd highly recommend if you just want the I'll most insane. Yeah, if you want the most insane superhero comic you can find, I will warn your listeners, it's not for kids. <laughs> so I um, think another comic yeah. that comes to mind that I really really like involving Spider Man is is Marvel Zombies. Oh yeah, have you seen those before? Have you read those? Man, yeah, totally. I, I, yeah, with the head of wasn't there like the head of Black Panther? I think so. Yeah, like they yeah. all like all. Have you, have you read it before, Brandon? The Marvel Zombie uh, series. I haven't. I've heard of it. I just it's. Never read it. I find it really does show like the ulterior to even Peter Parker's kind of personality, like what he represents. Like his entire personality is kind of swapped over. Like I feel like the story definitely focuses more on Spider Man than any other characters. Because of how much character development he gets in that no, that series, yeah, it is interesting how they sort of boil down his character into what he would be like if he was, you know, a flesh craving, oh yeah, dead zombie, <laughs> but still trying to hold like because he represents basically hope in a way, and he's still trying to hold on to that. Along with yeah. the, except for the other, all the other characters are just. Just gone with it, right? He j they just do what they want to do now. But Peter Parker, he still tries to hold that little bit of humanity. Yeah, that first one was written by Robert Kirkman. Hmm. Walking Dead. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I you think guys, have you heard of The Walking Dead? Oh heck yeah! I still got some. I, I actually got some not. of the original comics. Of you have never heard of it? It is an excellent uh, oh. series of <laughs> undead creatures. I. It's good. You yeah. see the new season? I'm uh, I have not yet. I'm I'm a good season behind. I'm five seasons behind. <laughs> oh my 
Dude, you're missing out. Right uh, when they get to to Alexandria, it starts popping. Yeah. I mean, I've read a lot of the comics that it's based off of. So, uh, yeah, I, th- I have like the first series of them or whatever. It's like a thick book with like the first five or six comics in it. Yeah. I actually like the comics better than the show, uh, but this season of the show was really good. This last season, I won't spoil anything, but I will say one thing. Whisperers. <laughs> I know! Oh. I saw a video clip. <laughs> Sick. You gotta There's get caught one... up. Come on, I thought you guys were a bunch of Friday night nerds. What are you, what are you doing? What are you Walking doing? Are you, are you going out? Are you going out? All no, I, you should this be staying Walking in. Dead is watching on Walking Sundays, Dead is on Sundays, man. I know, but get caught up on this it. This guy, dude. he has played oh. Black God most of the time. <laughs> yes, because I need to get Hudson, man. Yeah. I need... I need Hudson. I think I want to move more into your music, though. Um, going up, what kind of music or artists did you have like a, what greatly influenced you? Like, you grew up in a time where rap was seen at its peak, in my opinion. I'm sure a lot of people might say differently. Um, but was there any sort of songs that made you want to go, I want to make something like this, or I want to do this? Like, was there... Yeah. Sure, like so many. I mean, I think rap, like all music, there's great music that comes out every single year. I mean, when I was a kid, like the 90s was popping off and that's when we were getting a lot of like what are regarded now as classic albums. You had Nas, Illmatic, there was Wu-Tang, 36 Chambers. Of course, there was Biggie, Tupac, like J. Rue the Damager, Lords of the Underground, Master Ace. Like there were just so many crazy albums coming out. One of the best ones that I think uh, to this day I've probably listened to more than most is one called Dr. Octagon. Have you ever heard of that record? I believe I think I've I've heard of it. I just never listened to it yet. Okay, so Dr. Octagon is the alter ego of one of my favorite rappers, and his name is Cool Keith. And you should all check him out because Dr. Octagon really changed the game. So that dropped around, uh, I feel like it was like 96, maybe 95, 96, somewhere around there. And it, uh, his first album, Dr. Octagon, the Octogynecologist, go check it out. It is spooky, (laughs) weird, like kind of horror, kind of sci-fi, kind of nerdy. Yeah, Dr. Octagon a must listen if uh if you want like a classic rap album and to me when i first heard that that sort of showed me like wow you can do anything like prior to that like i had albums by like fresh prince which was definitely more like party and and like funny music and stuff you know i listen to weird al i listen to everything (laughs) but i i always love the beats and the rhymes of of any rap albums i could get my ears on so um Cool Keith was doing stuff with like a sense of humor, but also like playing characters and doing like science fiction stuff and like I said, horror and all this stuff. And he created this alter ego, Dr. Octagon, and the beats are incredible by this guy named The Automator who would go on to do tons of albums like Handsome Boy Modeling School and he'd work with people like Deltron, like like Del, uh, Del the Funky Homo Sapien. Who you might know was in Gorillas. If you ever listen yes, to Gorillas, yeah, I love Gorillas. Yeah, Gorillas yeah. is one of my favorite bands ever. Yeah, so uh, Cool Keith definitely a pioneer, and and Doctor Octagon was an album that that had a big effect on me. Yeah, and I love that the the Wu Tang albums too in the '90s were were huge for me because they were you know they were rapping about like kung fu and comic books and and they all had different styles and the beats were just dirty and just just really fresh. So yes, yeah. Oh man. Brandon, what about you? Like you, I don't, I haven't really heard much of your music. But what do you kind of listen to? Is it like sort of similar to what you listen to, Brandon? Uh, it it depends on like my mood and like what I'm feeling. Sometimes I listen to like rock, um, rap. <laughs> like if you listen to uh, rap, you gotta just, listen to Word Burglar, man. Oh, I will be checking that out. Today. <laughs> you gotta get burgled, man. <laughs> <laughs> he burgles words, man. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like Drake, like new old Drake, um, Logic, uh, NWA, Things. Big Tupac. Um, there, there's a lot of 
a lot of rappers that I listen to. But uh, yeah. Yeah. Do you listen to music when you're gaming? Mm, depends on the game. If it's like yeah. something that I don't need to hear, like call it, if it's if it's something other than Call of Duty, like GTA, or I'm just trying to have fun on Call of Duty, then I'll listen to music. Yeah. But if I'm trying to like sweat and try hard, I'm not going to listen to music. Mm. But this actually yeah. might. I just remember this, but this might actually frustrate you a little, Sean. But I'm back in um, high school, like in my senior year, and I was talking to my friends. I asked, hey, do you guys ever play some of like, the old classic games? And they're like, yeah, I play all the old PS3 games, the old PS2 games all the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's amazing that we're living in an era now where like PS2 is considered a classic gaming oh, system. Oh, man. Which is, it's cool, but uh, it's called the 2 because there was other PlayStation yeah. before it. <laughs> there was others before it. Damn it. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, that's gonna, you know, that, that's just reflective on, like, what you grew up with. and uh, Exactly. You know, so I was playing, like, PS1 and, and Super Nintendo, like, and NES. I had an NES. Like, that the was classics. crazy. And, uh, yeah. That's so I had a high about. score in uh, Nintendo Power Magazine. I don't even know if you guys remember that Oh, magazine. I gotta find that. I, you I had, had a high score in that? I oh, need to yeah. find that. I need to what? find that. I need, I I need that. It's this is true. Okay, so I made again. I would tell people this story, and they didn't believe me. So I had to make a rap about it, so people would believe it. So the video game was called Narc, and Narc was this super violent game on NES, and might it I may be I... the most violent game on Nintendo back in the day. And like you have bazookas, and you blow up people, and then if you pause oh, the game, you can see like their eight bit sprites like blowing up. It's ridiculous. <laughs> And the rockets, you it's funny, you'd have these rocket launchers, and you could blow up everything. You could blow up cars, people, like, fire hydrants, except you couldn't blow up dogs. So when these rabid what? dogs would try and kill you, the, you would shoot them with a rocket launcher, and instead of blowing up, they would just shrink and turn into a puppy. I, so, I don't know, it was like a magic rocket launcher, or Nintendo, like, drew the line and said, <laughs> Alright, we'll let you blow up people, but don't hurt the doggies. I remember, don't hurt the little puppies. <laughs> I do think I remember that game, I'm just trying to remember what it's from. But, um, it's on the other line, I think, like, somebody was trying to go for a PG-13 rated movie, and they couldn't get it because they showed a bare bottom. And so, like, oh, it's just be a blood on the ass, and, that, and then we'll get away with it. Whoa. Well, yeah, if you're interested to know the true story of my NARC High Score in Nintendo Power magazine, there is a video. It's called NARC High Score in Nintendo Power. <laughs> you know what we gotta do now? Easy to remember. So you gotta you gotta go do the Word Burglar deep dive. I mean, you know, um, guys, I mean, I, I did thinking... the deep dive on Friday Night Nerds. <laughs> yeah, fair you know? I was, like, listening to every one of your episodes before really? I came on. I, I did oh, my thank work. You. Thank you I so much, man. Work. That actually means a lot to us. You but guys, we gotta. So, you know, what we gotta do now. We need to get you back on, and all three of us. If I can find the emulator with that game, we'll got, we're gonna see if you can, you can beat your high school once again. Oh my gosh, I can't. I've tried playing it recently. It is the most frustrating game. Like the <laughs> thing about those old school games was, again, like back to what I was talking about—the patience of renting and stuff. Yeah. Like when you know when you're like an eight-year-old kid and you only own two video games, you get really good at the games you own. Exactly. <laughs> because that's Very all true. you've got. That's all you got. So you had the patience to play this. Had I had other games that were way better than Narc, I probably would not have gotten as good at Narc <laughs> as I had. But um, but now like the the commitment to get as good again at that game, I don't know if I've got the the hours in the day to do that because I'm just yeah. like I'm trying to fit in time to play like new games and stuff. I don't even have time for you know like. So it's, uh, I'm just so, you know, life gets so busy. You can only pick like one game. Like how many games do you guys have on the go at any given time, would you say? Probably. You playing two or three games? Probably two or three, actually. That's probably right on the money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, probably about one, honestly. You know, Brandon, there's one <laughs> other, you just don't name. <laughs> there's no, I, there's two, but I, there's, <laughs> no, I hate Fortnite so much. It's uh, Call of Duty Black Ops 4 and then another game that I'm not, not naming <laughs> on stream. <laughs> I'm right now maining, um... What, Pokemon Go? No, actually, he actually despises actually, Pokemon Go. It's, it's got I hate Pokemon Go, too, but it's, it's gotta, gotta do, do with Valley? Pokemon. It has to do with it's Pokemon. It's gotta do with Pokemon. It's gotta do with Pokemon. And another game, they're combined together. Stardew Valley, right? Or no? Actually, no. have you are you a big fan of Chucklefish's games there, Sean? 
I haven't really played much, but uh, I know I know of them. Yeah, there is one so, game. If you ever check it out, if you want to start getting into the kind of games, play Starbound. Starbound is one of my favorite games of all time by them. It is so much fun. I can I can play that for like hours upon hours. It is a lot of fun. What's the basic premise for me and your listeners who have never uh, played it? Yeah, I think um. Think you know what Terraria is? I'm sure it's like that 2D kind of Minecraft style exploring game. Yeah. Think that, but mixed with No Man's Sky and done a hundred percent right. It is done a hundred and ten percent right in every single way, and it makes things so much fun. Uh, it okay. is yeah. just a amazing sci-fi adventure game. It mixes in all kind of Wild West themes. You can find like Egyptian bird people. You can find these scientist apes controlled by a bigger mind. You can find, like, you have to battle with these tribal plants who have, like, this tr- trial going on. It is it is an experience. It is, has so much strange variety to it. It makes it such a, a wonderful experience. Awesome. I'm very... Were... Hmm? Go oh, ahead. Sorry. No, man, go ahead. Patrick, was that the game that you were trying to share with me on Steam? Yes. I need to get that. That sounds pretty dope. I've, I've told you so many times about it. I... How much is it? 20 bucks. <laughs> For, honestly, okay, with, maybe with, I'll actually have to get it. With all, that t- with all that content that's stocked in it, it's not that bad of a price. Because usually games like that will go for it's about sixty nine ninety nine, And nice. this one's going for 20 Cool, cool. Yeah, I'm like really... Right now, I'm looking forward to two 2D side-scrollers coming out. There's the final... The final update for Shovel Knight. Did you guys ever play Shovel Knight? I love Shovel Knight. I actually have my Wii U. Yeah, so... I I love it. And so there's a new one that's coming out uh, soon, early 2019, and Bloodstained. Have you guys heard of that one? Yes. There's another one you might actually like. Have you heard of Cuphead? Yeah, yeah, Cuphead. I've played Cuphead. I love Cuphead. uh, The graphics are crazy. And I love the music. The music's amazing. I think Brandon just hates that any challenging games because he won't even play Dark no, Souls. I, want, I Dark Souls is just I don't that's not my type of game. But, <laughs> but, like yeah. I I I'll play like Diablo or World of Warcraft or uh, <laughs> like games. stuff like that. But I, <laughs> I I I can't play Dark or Dark Souls. I can't. Speaking, well, speaking of challenge, um, I gotta get Sean. Have you ever played Dark Souls before? Yeah, yeah, I played it. How uh, do you? I, I, hmm? How do you feel about it? <laughs> well, I like it, but you know, for that type of game, I prefer something like, uh, like in that sort of exploration dungeony. Like, I love the vibe of it. I love mm. the characters. I love all the, you know, the monsters and, like, yeah. the, the like the whole design is incredible. Mm. But I... When I play it, it just makes me want to go play something like uh, like Bloodstained mm. or, which, or Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Yeah. So I'd rather do... If I'm going to do, like, an exploration through, like, castles and fighting monsters, I like the 2D stuff. I just find it a little easier to uh, maybe it's like i find the controls a little easier and it's just kind of easier to pick up and put down and definitely yeah it's like too dark souls is almost too vast for what it is like i like symphony of the night because everything is concentrated yeah. the soundtrack's incredible i don't know if you guys are how familiar you are with that game but it's really like an rpg but a side scroller where you can go and you have to there's tons of mysteries and puzzles, but you can also like upgrade your armor and weapons and do all the. There's all kinds of different ways to beat the game, and and there's a whole other second game you can unlock if you beat the game a certain way. So um, I go back to games like that. Yeah, I, I definitely got to give Dark Souls its props. Like uh, definitely, you know, like that was pretty revolutionary when it came out. Um, uh, fresh yeah. game for sure. There is one other game I'll bring up, in that, and then I'll let Brandon ask a question if you're into, like, Metroidvania kind of games. Oh, it is, yeah, you, you're this speaking is, my language, this bro. This is another, actually another Chucklefish game. It is called Time Spinners. And okay. it is basically, it is, I won't give away too much of the story because it's, it's good to learn on your own. But it's Metroidvania to its core in a lot of Castlevania-esque style. And I think you're going to like it a lot if you check it out. 
Oh man, I'm I'm a sucker for some Castlevania esque styled games. Oh, this you'll love this game, honestly. I just <laughs> thought of it. I'm playing it myself. It is, it's got its challenges for, to it for sure. But that'll be the last game I bring up to let you check out for yourself. And then after Brandon asks his next question, we're gonna do a bit of a tradition on here with you. Okay. Oh no. <laughs> oh, no. You, you don't have to like oh, no. drink. You don't have to like drink your your ass off or anything like that. It's just a little. Little tradition we have you on the podcast. Okay. Right. So, being the host of your own podcast along with your music career, what sort of advice do you commonly give to people, or what are the most common questions you get, and how do you answer them? Well, uh, in terms of advice, uh, I think I always tell people if you want to do something, you should do it. And don't get too much in your head. Just go out there and do it. Somebody told me once, if you, um, how should I put this? If you don't hate the first thing you ever put out, you mm -hmm. waited too long. So I think that's sort of a good rule of thumb. So if you guys were thinking, well, maybe we should do a podcast, maybe we shouldn't. But then you sit around and you do it, or maybe you look back on this 10 years from now, and if you do hate it now, like hate these ones 10 years from now, you did the right thing. Like my early music, I look back and I'm like, oh, I don't know, like I don't know if I like this, but if I had never put it out, I wouldn't have put out the other albums. You know, it's, it's yeah. a really sort of simple thing. So the point is to just, if you want to do something, you know, do it. Give it a try. Don't worry about what other people are going to think. Just just do it, and you're, you're, you'll learn from that. So, mm. um, And just al always keep learning, right? So mm. learn and look back on anything you do. So um, I don't know. And then just really just practice, practice what you want to do. Like if there's something you want to do, like learn as much as you can about it and and just keep you know, working hard at it to get better and, and discipline yourself. Yeah. And uh, and don't worry about what other people think. Dude, um, that yeah, was I guess. actually... Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. No, I no, saying, I, hope, but I hope that kind of answers it. It does, actually, but that is a, a lot of... It's really similar to what me and Ben were kind of going through and trying to make those podcasts. I think Ben can agree with that. Yeah, I it definitely would. can agree with that. Like, that yeah, was it's definitely... trial and error, right? You're not going to be perfect the first time you're out exactly. of the gate, right? You're not going to get a home run the first time you play baseball. Yeah. I mean, you might, but you just got to keep working at it. Yeah. We got, I say we got pretty lucky with the guests we were able to bring on our first episode. Oh, definitely. Well, I hope you can get some good guests sometime. We got you on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But um, All I, of our guests to date have been phenomenal, honestly. Honestly, yeah, we've got, I've been amazingly surprised at the guests we've been able to get, and I'm honestly happy that every single one of them, if any of you guys are watching, I want to thank you again, and I want to thank you again, Sean, for taking the time. <laughs> Oh, hey, it's my pleasure. And, you know, you guys are awesome. And, you know, definitely call me back. Like, I'd love to come back, you know, oh, check back you. in like in six months or something, see where you guys are at. Honestly, I think we might just send you a free piece of merch when we get it up. <laughs> oh, free right. FNN merch. Like merch. <laughs> free FNN merch. We, already, we actually got our design and everything going, too. Nice, nice. But um, we're going to move on to our tradition on here. Have you ever heard of the Wu Tang Clan? <laughs> yes, has I've, he ever heard of I that? may have heard of their <laughs> tales once <laughs> well without other guests we we found the Wu-Tang Clan name generator where Childish Gambino or Gulliver got his own name and we wanted to know if you put your own in it you don't have to say your name out loud or anything but just tell us what comes out you know I never did put my name in it well I'll put Not it in down. I'll put a link in chat here for you and you can go on and we'll give you a drum roll when you do it all right, we're gonna let me bring this thing up here. All right, oh. dang name generator. So do I put my full name in yes. here? Yes. Yep. All right. Yeah. Now the name that I always like to give myself was a uh, thirteenth icicle. Thirteenth icicle. <laughs> what? It just sounded like a bizarre. Like if you right. listen to a lot of Wu Tang stuff. Oh yeah. Okay, it says, Sean Jordan, from this day forward, you will also be known as Tough Contender. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I, I think oh. I like Word Burglar better. I like yeah, Word uh, Burglar better, too. I Word Burglar that. is definitely better. A.K.A. 13th Icicle. <laughs> the man, the myth, the legend, 13th Icicle. 
<laughs> Man, he got Wicked Warlock. I remember that much. I got Wicked Warlock, and then I put uh, who was it? Darth Vader and Logan Paul. Oh in. yeah, Darth I don't know if you know who Logan Paul is. But yeah, oh, yeah, of course. Get? It was. They both got the exact same name. Both yeah, of they them. got the exact same name, and it suited them. Like, oh. <laughs> wow. I don't remember what it was. It was I gotta like, put it back in later. <laughs> It was definitely suitable of the whole thing that Logan Paul did in Japan. Oh, don't even bring that up. Please, we're going to get banned. And then it yeah. suited what Darth Vader does, too. Yeah. It, it kind of, it, like, Darth Vader and Logan Paul are the same person. <laughs> oh, man. Speaking of characters, well, this can bring us into our next question, I think, because you've only got a bit of time with us left, so we'll try to get these questions going. But um, this next one is actually I'm really curious about. Um, being a fan of classic cartoons, how do you feel about these like newer cartoons like you see around now? Do you think that a lot of them can draw inspiration from these classic old cartoons that you grew up with, or maybe they're just like just trying to do their own thing? And do you really think they're just like meh? Yeah, I mean, I haven't. There's not that many new cartoons that I've watched. I caught a bit of the new Ninja Turtles cartoon where they've sort of redesigned some of the characters, and I, it's okay. Um, the the one cartoon recently that I did really, really like, well, there were two, actually. The new Voltron cartoon I thought was pretty good, and Castlevania. You know, we were just talking about Castlevania, yeah. but the Castlevania anime that's on Netflix, written by Warren Ellis, it's awesome. Like, yeah. I can't believe how good it is for uh, a cartoon based on a video game the the animation is great the voice acting is great the story is really cool because it expands on the world and whether you know anything about castlevania or not i think you'll get a lot out of this show so it's really cool and it and it reminds me of of like animes i used to like uh back in the day like ninja scroll stuff like that like when ghost in the shell first came out there's like a great street fighter anime back in the day um but yeah, I mean, I, I I still, if I have the time, I'll go back and, like, dig up old cartoons, uh, like old Transformers and stuff like that. But um, but yeah, I like, I, I guess, yeah, Voltron and Castlevania for new cartoons. That's, that's where I'm at. What am I missing out on? I mean, obviously stuff like Rick and Morty is dope and stuff like that, too. But if you're thinking, like, cartoon cartoons, like, I feel like something like Castlevania is aimed at... The, the type of audience that would have liked like cartoons in the 90s and 80s and stuff yeah definitely i honestly seen um i've seen i have it on my recommended list right now castlevania i just haven't watched it i think brandon's what you're a fan of more of the older cartoons i think brandon than he is the newer ones i'm pretty sure what do you like um, brandon i I can I can go for some SpongeBob man. Yeah. Um, I can go for some Ed Ed and Eddie. That Rest was, in that peace was to the SpongeBob creator. Oh man. yeah, that's, that's a definitely. shame. Stan Lee um, too, by the way. Rest I in know. Peace still. Stan Lee it's, as it's well. It's been a tough fall for oh, like, creative man. types. Yeah. Definitely. Um, the fall of fall. Johnny Bravo. Oh yeah. Oh. I think um, my favorite. Did you ever hat. watch The Tick? The Tick was great too. <laughs> I have not watched it. I watched oh, the tick. It's hilarious. There's a new live action show of the Tick, but if you can track down the uh, the old Tick cartoon series from the '90s, pretty pretty good. Yeah, I Definitely think have. my favorite cartoon would have to be The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. Oh my god, I forgot about that. <laughs> have you seen that Deep one? Deep cut. Deep cut. <laughs> it's honestly <laughs> just so perfect. The characters are funny. They they stick to their personality. It's just all around so wonderful. You can sympathize, you can hate any single character at any single time. And it just, oh. it's such an amazing blend. It Love it. another show. That Danny Phantom? <laughs> no, it was, I didn't like Danny Phantom that much. Um, it was like on around the same time. I think it was on Cartoon Network, actually, with uh, Grim Avengers. It was a... Uh, my gym partner's a monkey or something oh, like that. Oh, I remember that one. That was on around the yeah. same time as Wayside. Wayside? What is that? It was. It's a, based off a book. I don't. Have you heard? Yeah, you, Wayside Stories from Wayside High. Yeah, yeah. there was a. Um, they made a TV show on it. It. It was super funny. I quite liked it as a kid. Yeah, it was a good book. I, I remember reading the book as a kid. There I might did, have been I'm, a couple of them. Yeah. I read it in middle school myself as well. 
It was pretty good. I liked it. You a guys lot. ever hear of uh, this guy Harry Potter? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh wait. Speaking, speaking of Harry Potter. <laughs> speaking of Harry Potter. Um, I was, I, I'm sorry to keep bringing this up, Luke. I'm sorry to keep bringing it up, man. But um, our third co-host, who sadly couldn't be here today to be with you, he's on vacation right now with his girlfriend for his birthday. But um, he was an extra Death Eater in one of the movies. Whoa. Yeah, that's what we said. Yeah. Luke, and you you couldn't show up on the podcast today to tell yeah, us right. about it. Yeah. I, <laughs> Ah, uh, man. Well, I hope you and your girlfriend are having an amazing vacation, and you're not getting hunted down by any Death Eaters. They, <laughs> they can really ruin your afternoon. <laughs> Shout out to Luke, guys. Shout out to Luke. What's up, Luke? We missed you. You're missing all this fun, dude. Dude, it is really fun. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I have a, I'm going to be asking like a part two to this next question, but um, I think Brandon can ask the first part for it. Okay, so, since you currently have a comic book, would you ever, in the future, want to make a cartoon based off the comic book, or a completely new concept along the lines of just your music, or um, anything along Abs the lines of that? Absolutely, that's a dream. I've got a whole bunch of different ideas for cartoons, and I'm hoping to try and make something happen like hopefully you know it takes a long time but uh the comics i'm doing right now there's one called the last paper route which is about two best friends who have the craziest paper route in the city and this is back again taking it back you know like i was talking about sort of history and and nerdy nostalgia it's basically like the the time of the paper route is really behind us right but back in the day mm. this is how people got their news before everybody had like a supercomputer in their pants you know you had to wait around and get a newspaper to, to tell you the news or what was on tv that night or, or whatever right I mean, you still had tv but but people read the papers, and uh, so the comic book is about is about that era, and it's it's a really fun uh, comic. You can check it out if you're in Halifax. Check out uh, it's at Strange Adventures, which is like the best comic shop in I, the country. I, I every time I'm in the city, I go there. Every time oh, yeah. I'm in the city, I go there. They've got a Dartmouth location and a location in Fredericton. Strange Adventures. If you love comics or videos, anime toys anything cool nerdy you've got to go to strange adventures they're the best and uh oh. the other comic i do is called snake or's pizza about an evil snake man who failed to rule the globe and now he has to work at a pizza place mm. and, <laughs> and i would I love to do a cartoon that, for that. Just, yeah just... we're gonna we're gonna be relaunching it because i'm sold out of all the issues so we're <laughs> gonna be collecting it as a graphic novel um so we're gonna be doing a kickstarter in the new year for that so I'll let you guys know when that goes up. I love help spreading the word about that. Just, I think it's a funny comic, and I and I yeah. gotta get it back out in print. Yeah, just before I ask part two, um, would um, Friday Night Nerds is no way sponsored by uh, Strange Adventures? So, <laughs> wait, what? <laughs> Strange uh, Friday Night Nerds is no way sponsored by Friday by Strange Adventures. <laughs> no, but I am a former employee. I used to work there when I, I was in high school, so I, I love. I love, love that comic there. shop. So I am. Uh, it's my. Uh, it's my point of view that they are the best comic shop Same. in Canada. So check Gotham them out. Comics is no. so. Part two. Um, there's a million amazing. <laughs> there's a million amazing comic shops in the country. I'm. Ours I'm, is I'm, actually kind of bad, to be honest. <laughs> where are you based? Uh, Maryland. Yeah, Maryland and the. Oh, US. Maryland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's a lot of great shops in the states too. We like to call Our ourselves. Local one. Oh, sorry, Brandon. I don't know the Maryland scene. It's so bad. It's like for a, a, an action figure, you would pay like ten bucks, twenty bucks at Target. He's charging like forty and fifty, and it's like the most common character of the whole entire series. And yeah, it's that's like unfortunate. Sometimes those shops color. get yeah. Sometimes the shops get screwed over too from their distributors, right? Yeah, because they fair just enough. can't compete with like if Target's ordering a, like a million Spider-Man figures and one comic shop's o only ordering one box of them. Unfortunately, yeah. like, the price there's going to be a dis disparency, you know, or uh, blah, blah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. But I think part two can open this up. Um, would you ever want to make a video game of Bird Burglar? And if so, can we start in it? Or in the cartoon you'd want to make. Oh my god! <laughs> I would, I would love to. Hey, if I could, if I could do it, that'd be incredible. 
Um, <laughs> I feel like if I made a word burglar game, it would almost have to be like maybe like a puzzle game. Yeah, like something like a classic pixel eight bit kind of game, like two D side scroller. Yeah, you know what? Like the two D side scrolling, we'd have to come up with a really good hook um, for that. But yeah, I do like the idea of trying to do like a mix and match word puzzle game or something, and trying to make words rhyme while they're dropping like Tetris or something. Like I could see that being kind of cool. Yeah. I like, like fat fat beats playing in the background. In fact, maybe I should go make that right now. You do you it. Know, I'm getting copyrighted. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> we would actually, um, speaking of comics and all that, I just remember this, but um, I was actually given permission by this game that we had the um, lead designer on. It was uh, episode two, Switch from Space. I was talking, I posted a tweet saying, I want to make a fan-made comic, but I'm too shit at drawing to do it. And they said, no, go for it. So I basically... Kind of have permission right now to make a fan-made Squid Some Space comic. You should absolutely do it. And I you know what? Yeah. Just draw. Just do it. It's like we were talking about before. It doesn't matter, you know? You want to be my You drawer? are the only one who can draw like you. So you make that yeah. happen, and, and people will dig it. I have a bit of an idea in mind. I have two ideas in mind. That if one of them is going to be like the classic inside the game, like following a soldier who just joined the front lines. And beating all these characters. Oh, the other one is a sort of contest for Squid from Space between with a couple of friends trying to compete and win some money to save a uh, an old, a small gaming store in the city. Cool, cool. I want to put That's... it in Canada too because. <laughs> well, Canada's a pretty cool country. Exactly. Yeah. There's not enough. There's not enough comics about Canada except for one. I got it. I want to do a shout out to this book. It's called We Stand on God. Have you read it before, Sean? I I have. Yeah, by Brian K. Vaughn and uh, Steve Scrooge. Yeah. I don't think Brandon's read it, but I want to mail it to him because it's such a good read. I think you should. It's a it's uh, a good it's a cool comic. That's be. nice. It's Plus, like, getting stuff in the mail is the best. Yeah. True. Isn't Wait. that the best? I'd rather get a letter than an email. Yeah. It's, it's, so much more, <laughs> it's so much more magical getting a letter like, oh, what can be inside? It's right here in my hand. Yeah. It's real. It's real that way. Yeah. We were actually... Um, yeah, Brandon? Oh, yeah. The... You have to wait till Canada Post is off strike. Oh, don't even, don't even bring that up. Please, <laughs> don't even bring that up right now. I'm already <laughs> mad at them as it is. Oh, man. <laughs> but it seems we are closing out soon. It looks like Sean's time is almost up with us, unfortunately. I, I wish this could last forever, really. And why, is there anything you want to say to your audience here? To anything, just shout out whatever's on your mind right now. Any projects you have, anything that's come to mind that you want people to know about. Well, I'm currently touring Canada, and uh, I've got a few shows coming up in Toronto and London, Ontario, and then Halifax, and I will be down in the States in 2019 doing a bunch of shows, going to be playing in like, Portland, Oregon, going to be playing in Austin, Texas, uh, a lot more shows going to be filled in. Yeah, check out my videos on YouTube, just type in Word Burglar, you'll find them. I think your listeners, if you're into video games, I did something for Xbox, so I wrapped the top 150 Xbox games uh, in one song in four minutes. It so was... check out Word Burglar Xbox 150 mm. and check out the Narcai score and my newest album, Rhyme Your Business. I'm on Spotify, iTunes, however you listen to music, you can find Word Burglar. And I just want to thank you guys for having me. Like, I'm really excited. I wish you all the best with the podcast and, and you know, just keep keep doing it, you know, and, and hit me up and, and, and I'd love to come back, you know. We definitely so. loved having you on, and I think Brandon agrees just the same. This was a good episode. I liked it. Yeah. Oh, word up. Word up, guys. Yeah. Before you go, any East Coast dates on your uh, <laughs> on your uh, tour he there? He wants East to Coast, visit West? Maryland. I would love to get to Maryland. I think I write. I mean, I'm trying to get as many dates filled in as I can. Like, hopefully, I'll, I'll be making announcements probably. You know, February or March, once I have it locked down. But uh, yeah, I'd like to. I'd like to do Maryland. Um, I think I'll be in Philadelphia. I don't know how often that's, you get to Philadelphia, but that's uh, only two hours away. Yeah, so I think I'm going to be hitting Philadelphia in June. I that's, might have to go. Yeah, yeah. Well, I might be going to. I might be going Boxing Day to your show. So. Yeah, yeah, Boxing Day in Halifax. It's a free I, show. <laughs> Highly recommend it. I'll make sure to record it for Brandon. I should yeah, I, just record it. For if me. I can have the portable battery, oh man, I can't. I don't want to stream it like that because I mean that's just gonna take. That's just theft. 
That's just you too. Can, you can take some footage. That's all good. I'll take some footage. Definitely, I'll take some. I'll take some take footage, but I don't want people. I don't want to just take the full show because I want people to know you. Well, make if sure you, you say what's up if you come to the show. Yo, sure. backstage pass. If you come to Maryland, <laughs> can I like be your videographer or something, dude? Just like sure. record the whole show. Brandon is actually really actually knows a lot more about streaming and videos than I do. I can cool. give him that yeah, much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. But I think that's all the time we have for today, folks. Thank you very much again, Sean, for coming on, and we'll see My you all in the pleasure. next episode. All right. Have a good Stay night, nerdy. ladies and gentlemen.